Hi, this is Libby Gleesman, Professor of Nursing at the Utica University. And the pediatric assessment is a video that I'd like you to view before you come to the immersion weekend. So let's get started. The pediatric population varies in ages from infancy through adolescence, which is considered 17, 18 year old. The importance of doing an assessment includes growth and development, health assessment itself, which includes the different systems, the um, H-E-E-N-T, neuro assessment, the primitive reflexes, such as rooting, sucking, moral, stepping, tonic neck, plantar grass, and Babinski. In addition to that, respiratory assessment, cardiovascular, GIGU, musculoskeletal, skin or integumentary, immunological, hematological, very important to do a pain assessment because it varies with the ages, development, which includes the motor um, ability, which is both gross and fine, communication and language, social and emotional development, and it includes health promotion, which is the anticipatory guidance that we give uh, parents and the um, children themselves, depending on their age. The objectives of this, at the completion, you will discuss the developmental stages of each of the uh, different levels of patients. You'll discuss the assessment in those developmental stages. You'll gain knowledge to focus on a systems approach because I'm going to review each of the systems and how you would approach them and understand the importance of the anticipatory guidance, prevention and promotion of health, which is so important in the pediatric population. This is a slide that shows you the distribution of the pediatric population. If you look at this, zero to four is about 27%. 39% is five to 11, which is at this time due to the census back in 2019, is 39% for the five to 11 year olds. The 12 to 14 year olds is about 17% of the population and also the adolescent 15 to 17 is 17%. So it's kind of interesting the distribution. On this slide, I have given you some links to some developmental videos, which I'd like you to view. Infant to age five is the first and school age to adolescence um, would be the second video. There are many different ways that you can break down the developmental groups. This happens to be just one way. Um, one of the things I do wanna stress is there's a lot of play, learning and growing together that takes place in each one of these levels. Premature, newborn, young infants, older infants, toddlers, preschoolers, school age adolescents and children with special needs is also added to this population. This is a preventative um, video that I found on YouTube. I thought was pretty good. And you should also view that in care of the population, pediatric population. So let's start with assessment. Assessment includes vital signs. Vital signs are do vary from age, one age to the other age. You, you know, and you really um, need to look at the guidelines for that. Uh, in addition to that, laboratory values are also by age. And I'm going to show you some slides with some examples of lab values. One of the problems is uh, be careful because you'll get a lab value back on a pediatric population and maybe the lab doesn't really show that age group. It really just shows the adult um, variables. So um, be aware of that. Normal weight and growth rates are very important. Uh, Types of play by group development is very important. As you see, these little children are playing um, and you need to have a handle on uh, what, what is it that they do with their age group. Safety is a big issue. You need to really stress safety when we're taking care of this population. Body systems, as I said, we're gonna go each, through each one of them and the anticipatory guidance. Vital signs. Um, as you see on this picture, there are some blood pressure cuffs there and there's many, many different sizes. One of the things that I stress about blood pressure cuffs 
is it has to measure two thirds of the arm. If it's less or more, it will alter the level of the blood pressure. We don't do blood pressures on the very young infants. Uh, we do them and varies uh, age two and three. You'll see different providers do different things. Uh, respirations need to be count counted um, for one minute with your hand on their chest and the heart rate has to be apical again for one minute. Keep in mind that you have to have a quiet environment when you're doing all of these. And there are things that can affect the pulse rate, medications, activity, pain, hemorrhage, stress, crying, and heart defects. This is a slide that shows you lab values. As you see the hemoglobin is broken up to many different levels and there is some variation there. Same thing with the white blood cells and the glucose. Here's additional lab values also that you can review and look at. The metabolic panel is below. We need to have an understanding of that. It's pretty much the same as the adult. This is a vital sign guideline by um, age distribution, and it's put out by the American Heart Association. The World Health Organization, or WHO, has put together some growth patterns. So you can click on these charts, and there are uh, PDFs that will take you to um, these sites that you can look at the growth charts. Most electronic charting has the growth charts within it, so you, it, it really is very easy for you to click on and you can see the pattern. They usually come up with a graph that shows you whether the child is staying on a certain percentage. The one thing about growth of children, if they start out at a lower percentage and they stay on the percentage, that's not a bad thing. If they drop off, that is uh, something that you need to address and be aware of. Other areas that you need to address is uh, sleep patterns. Children have very different sleep patterns. Some children sleep beautifully and others um, are night owls. I had two different sons. One was a great sleeper, the other was not. Uh, diet needs to be addressed. One thing about diet is children need to have foods introduced to them early. If they don't get introduced to fruits and vegetables, they will not wanna consume them. Hydration with water is very important, not only juice, but hydration with water. Skin um, needs to be addressed because there are a lot of different skin um, problems in children. One example would be eczema. As providers, we need to be aware if there's any neglect or abuse of the children and we are reportable um, certified uh, registered providers that are obligated to do so. Dentition, we have a site called Smiles for Life, which you will complete eight different modules in dentition. One of the shortcomings in our healthcare system in the United States is dental health. Immunizations do change, and the CDC website has the most uh, prevalent or up-to-date uh, recommended immunizations. Another area that needs to be addressed is emotions because children can have emotions that do vary and it, you need to have an understanding of where they're at and how they feel. The overview of the family dynamics have a lot of bearing on how the child is raised and how they react to things and their comfort zone. Hygiene should be addressed in all age groups and children should be taught to address that hygiene as they are, have that ability with the age that they are progressing to. There is an environmental safety, the New York State um, website is here so that you click on and it'll tell you the guidelines as to how um, the age and weight and height of children and what type of uh, device or uh, seat belts versus uh, car seat that they need to be using. Other, other areas of safety is smoking. Uh, children are exposed to toxins. They're exposed to smoking. Um, also, secondhand smoke. Parents say, they, oh, I, I go outside and smoke, and I come in, and my child isn't exposed to smoke. But yes, if you have smoke on your clothing, the child has secondhand smoke exposure. 
And much of this contributes to uh, respiratory distress syndrome in the child. Home safety areas to review with the parents and be have it, help them be aware of is cribs. Bars in a crib have to be less than 2.38 inches or six centimeters, a firm mattress. Hot water shouldn't be any greater than 120 degrees Fahrenheit and 48 degrees centigrade. Electrical outlets need to be covered. That's very important. Children see an outlet, they'll find something to try to stick, stick their finger or uh, a bobby pin or something they might've found on the floor. Uh, they will try to um, access those outlets. Protect uh, children from the kitchen. Kitchen has uh, dish soap, it has cleaning items that are low many times and they need to be secured and put up high. Um, I still put my cleaning um, goods up high. I started that as a, my, with my children and I still have them up high. And now that I have grandchildren, my house is secured and I don't have to think about it. <clears throat> Excuse me. The stairs can be an issue because children do have accidents and stairs and they have no concept, especially an infant. Their heads are very top heavy and they can fall down the stairs very easily. In addition to that, animals, people think, oh, that's my animal. I've had them and they're so comforting. And that's true. But animals are animals and they do, um, a dog can turn on a child if they grab them or startle them or pull their tail or whatever. And also cats, uh, they tend to want to snuggle up against a baby. So as I set up higher uh, securing chemicals, such as in your kitchen, there's also medications and batteries that need to be addressed. Medications are interesting. Um, sometimes children can get into a container when you can't even get into it yourself. Batteries they put in their mouth and they do have certain acid, especially when they get older. There, I have provided you with a poison contact number. This is an 800 number and a website if you have any issues and have any uh, people that have, uh, children have consumed any chemicals of any sort, that number has to be called and they do make out a report and they give you instructions on what to do. Let's uh, switch gears and go to the examination. I know many of you are taking 611 or already have, but keep in mind that removing clothing should be done when examining, but you need to provide privacy and make sure that they are not, um, the temperature is not too cold for them. Now, what do you do about a parent that's present during a physical exam? What I do is I ask the child if they want the parent to stay, especially when they get to be preteen and teenage years, whether they want that adult in there during the physical examination. And explain to the parent that when, when you finish the exam, they can come back in with what you found and any questions. Uh, with teenagers, it gives you an opportunity to ask them questions that they would not respond to in front of their parent. You, it's very important for you to establish a relationship with a parent and infant, child or teenager. The next system is cardiac. Children, 50% of um, heart murmurs are innocent, so they, they go away. Do a full assessment, include the different valves, aortic, pulmonic, herbs, point, tricuspid, and mitral. Count for a full minute, make sure the environment is quiet, and, do, and use your bell and diaphragm. And if you have a pediatric size stethoscope, that is really very important uh, to use for an infant or a small child. Respiratory system, inspect the anatomy, observe the infant for any flaring, um, nasal breathing, count for a full minute again, hold your hand on their chest, and again, you want to have a quiet environment. Skin, rashes, any moisture, color and tone, dark versus light skin. I have a color tone chart here for you that shows you the different types of uh, colors are not perfect, but it gives you an idea of the variety that is out there. Temperature and turgor are very important in addressing the skin. The GI or gastrointestinal or premature in, um, in infants do have some reflux 
and that needs to be investigated. It's interesting the difference between an infant and an adolescent, how much the stomach contents will hold. An infant has 20 milliliters up to 1500 milliliters for an adolescent. So it's, it's a big span. Stomach acid usually uh, is present around six months old. Another thing that you need to check is make sure you know about the umbilicus or their belly button. Examine their with your palms to reduce tickling. Um, if you use the tips of your fingers, they, they do tickle. And know the types of stools that are possible with, with an in, infant through um, teenage years. The GU system, again, provide privacy, inspect the genitalia. Females are prone to urinary tract infections. Males could be circumcised as first uncircumcised and they if they're not circumcised, you need to pull the foreskin back to do an examination and also teach that child to do so, depending on their age. Kidney is very susceptible to trauma. Just think about where the kidneys lie in your, um, your, super, your area on your lower back. And STIs uh, indicate possible central sexual abuse and it needs to be addressed. The endocrine system. Hormones stabilize at 12 to 18 months, so it's very um, unstable when they're born. They can have pseudomenstruation, uh, breast milk, labia hypertrophy, which is, can be normal, and the blood sugar doesn't stabilize until age five. Another area is cognition and emotions. Cognitive. Ask the child, um, how do you do in school? Or you may also be asking the parent in addition to that. Assess for short and long-term memory and monitor or assess their mental status. Emotional, as young as three children can have depression. They can have anxiety, lack of self-esteem. They can have uh, some problem with the relationship. So I always ask the child's names of their friends. They can't always tell you the last name and that's fine but at least they know the first name of their friends. Um, review ADD and ADHD, use caution with that. Sometimes parents want them put on medication because they're very active and hyper, but it, they need an official assessment with a uh, accepted um, provider that does ADD and ADHD. Eating disorders, bulimia, anorexia nervosa, needs to be monitored and you need to have a handle on how would you pick up on those disorders. Body image is very important for the teenager. So that's when you really need to ask the parent to leave or stay and let the, the teenager make that decision. Musculoskeletal. An infant usually sits up between six and nine months. They walk between nine and 16 on an average. So observe the child walking. Check for the spine for scoliosis. There's some pictures here that show you uh, scoliosis. One is very severe. The other is a little bit less pronounced. Check their hips for um, problems with the hip and screen for club feet. Neurological. Infants have primitive re reflexes that are usually gone between six and eight months. You need to go back and review the root the suck, the moral, the grasp, the tonic neck, walking, stepping, reflex, and the Babinski. When does it start? How would you describe it? And when would it be gone? And that's very important. Examine the 12 cranial nerves, level of consciousness, uh, the perla. Pain response is very important. It's very difficult. Each, each developmental stage has a different approach to respond to their pain. Um, when a child can't talk to you, then you have to observe their pain through their um, So motor activity, sorry about that. I didn't have my phone off. Motor activity is very important. You need to look at that with the child. Sensory and sight. Sensory hearing uh, is intact at birth. Usually screening is done in the labor and delivery room. The sight, wide range of sight. 
age five, they should have 20-20 vision. They may not be able to use this Snellen um, chart, but there can be also pictures used. Strabismus, um, they have until age six, and they fix on colors at age four. Obesity is a problem in our country, and the CDC statistics in 2017 indicate that the Hispanic population is 21.9% obesity, Black population 19.5, and the white population 14.7. That's in the pediatric population. Most obese children have obese parents, which is on, on the higher end. Hypertension is higher with obesity. Be careful about talking about diet. Don't tell a child, go on a diet. Discuss healthy eating. As you see, this young child has three donuts in one hand and an apple in the other. Discuss how much more healthy the apple is versus lose weight because they can get into um, problems with that and become anorexic um, or bulimic based on just those comments. Other areas to address, anticipatory guidance, which are age specific, and there are guidelines in your bright futures, which you need to purchase if you haven't already when you get to your first uh, theory course, and especially for your 622 course where you do more concentrated pediatrics. Education is based on their age and what you found during the exam. And you also need to do some preventative care and look at the standard of care. I have a picture here of a suicide prevention is prevalent in children, teenage years. We used to just say teenagers, but now we're seeing um, increases with the school age child. So it needs to be addressed. Sometimes they don't wanna share how they feel uh, with, their, with their parents. So it needs to be actually asked them if they ever uh, felt like they, could, they wanted to harm themselves. You'd be surprised, they'll tell you yes. And these are my references that I retrieved um, to support this information. So I hope that you enjoyed this PowerPoint presentation. And what I would like you to do is to go into this and go a little bit further into some of the developmental things with the age groups. We're going to have a breakout session during the um, immersion weekend, and we're gonna split up the groups into six months, 18 months, four years, 10 years, and 15 years. And we're gonna review the fine motor, uh, gross motor, language, personal, social, and any um, general impressions you have um, of that age group. And we're gonna talk about pain management. And you have a good uh, day, and I hope you enjoyed this presentation.